awesome sauce? Scene one, Apple, take one. So about uh, eight months, ten months, I don't know, a year ago, something like that, I had gone to Arizona and uh, went over to my uncle's house and he has a shed in the back of his house that basically has been holding um, tools and different things from my great-great-grandfather and whatnot. I mean, things he never used. I mean, it was just stuff that he's had for a long time. It's just been sitting out there. And the shed, you know, leaks and whatnot. And everything in there is just, it just looks completely destroyed by the environment. And I had seen that old butcher knife. And you guys had seen me do my little restore on it. And I could have done a better job. It's just, eh, you know, it's just like whatever. And I had given that back to him. Um, and that damn thing was sharp as hell by the time I was done. And some of you guys were whining, oh, you're gonna, you should make it mirror fin it. You know, it's, some, it's funny when you do a video on YouTube about restoring knives, you end up having all these knife fairies come out. And these guys think that they're the end all be all of every blade known to man. You know, like they're, they were the ones that taught the people to make samurai swords. Like they think that they're the, they're the utmost expert. And they only come to your video to talk shit. Right, you're doing it wrong. You're doing this, this, and they're nobodies. You know, they're bombs. You know, and it's you, you get that with YouTube. You know, but <clears throat> let's do it. Let's do another one. Let's do something that's a little bit more fun. This one looks like it's kind of gone through hell and back. This is an old axe head here, and there's actually it looks like it says plum on it. This is actually used for my paint sprayer, but. I think it says plum on here. And this is very old. Um, this, I think, was my great grandfather's. I don't know. It's this has been out in my uncle's shed probably even before I was born, you know. So I really have no idea. But that says plum. And I'm assuming that this does not belong to a plumber, right? But and it says a plumber, it says four plum, four plum. Now I'm thinking the four might have something to do with the um, weight, perhaps. So I'm going to weigh this, and it's saying it's three pounds and ten ounces. Uh, Sixteen ounces would be a pound, so we're like six ounces less than uh, four. I have a hard time believing that I would have lost six ounces from just rust and things. I had done a brief web search on this to see if I could find out any information on it and there wasn't a whole lot of stuff that I could really find out. There's tons of information about Plum um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is from the 40s. I'm pretty sure this is from the 40s. So. Well, even with a web search, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. Um, you know, it seems that Plum has been around since the 1800s, and they've, they've gone through a lot of different um, buying and selling of the companies and different times of manufacture, and they've done all sorts of stuff, so it's really hard to tell. I am pretty convinced, though, that this um, is probably from the 40s or earlier. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, I don't really have any reference for that, but I'm pretty sure that four is supposed to be four pounds. Okay, so we got some rust on here, and I was thinking, you know, I could probably end up throwing this inside a um, a wash with a uh, battery charger to try to remove a bunch of the rust on here. Um, and that might be actually good for the rust that's inside here. You know, but when I look in there, there's really not too much, and I think just a wire brush would take care of that. We have pitting, uh, and obviously that's not going to take care of the pitting or nothing. So I, I think that um, I might just end up trying a sanding disc. Uh, um, thinking I might just try this, see how well this works out, and um, depending on how well this works out, um, that might just be good enough.
man, there is some pretty serious pitting in this thing. Pretty serious pitting in this. Um, question is, is do I want to try to take that pitting out and reshape this to make it look new or not? I don't really know. Um, if I do, I'm going to have to use a different type of grinding wheel. Um, because the one I'm using now is kind of just knocking off some of the surface stuff here. It, it seems to me that if I want to take out these pits, I, it, I'm going to have to get artistic and I'm going to have to kind of remove a little bit more metal than I really wanted to. Um, but I, some of these pits are just so deep, it's just going to look really funny if I don't remove them. So I'm going to try to reshape it. What the hell? It's not the ideal disc on here, but might as well use what I've got on here, you know? What I'm going to do is um, this section right here, like this part I'm not worried about. That's, it's not pitted, it, it's, it's okay. And the same I think is true on the opposite side as well. But what I want to do is um, in these hard to reach areas, come in here with the grinder, take that stuff off. I'm going to take this over to my belt sander and I'm going to try to shape a lot of this so that way um, I don't think I'll be able to get all the pits out without removing a whole bunch of, of steel. But if I can remove a lot of it, I think that'll be cool. So... Okay, so, so this is what I've got so far on one side. It's not too shabby. Um, I've still got a little bit of pits. I'm going to try to take those out with something a little bit more aggressive. On this side, um, well, down here I've hit it a little bit. This side we're going to end up doing uh, something similar to what we did on the other side. The grinding um, or polishing disc that I'm using is starting to kind of become a little uh, uh, worn. And uh, I went and I got a couple of other uh, discs. One of them I got a little bit more aggressive just for the heavily, uh, heavy pitted stuff. And um, in fact, I'm going to switch that out right now. Before I was using uh, 80 grit and uh, right now I'm going to be using 60. Getting a little hot. Some of these pits are very deep and it's not real easy trying to get a lot of them out. I, I might not be able to get all of them out without having to remove a bunch of metal and I don't really want to do that. In order for me to take all of the pits out, I would have to take out a lot of metal, you know, and I really don't want to do that. Um, the, I mean, it would be nice if I, if I could remove all the pits, but um, as old as this is and the condition it is, I just don't think that it's practical. With that, that's about as far as I'm going to be able to get, really, um, with that particular wheel. Um, some of these pits go really, really deep, and I just don't think I'm going to be able to get them all out. Um, and I don't want to remove freaking eight ounces of steel just to try to make it look perfect you know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense so right now what I'm doing is I'm switching over to my 80 grit 
uh, wheel here. Putting my mask back on. All right, so at this point, basically, I'm in a position where I can take some wet dry sandpaper to this and um, try to get it to a mirror finish. I think with all the pitting, it would be a waste of time. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take it to the buffer and I'm going to just see what the buffer can do as far as taking a lot of this stuff out. See how close I can get it to a mirror finish without spending hours and hours and, on sanding. Um, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to try it at a low buffing speed first. thing is is there's a lot of deep scratches in this and quite honestly I wish I had a, a disc that might have been like 220 um, to uh, polish this a little bit better but the reality is is it, I mean I, I could set back with some wet uh, wet sand uh, wet wet and dry sandpaper and take a bunch of this stuff out um, but I'm, I'm just at a point I think that I would just be doing a whole bunch of work for nothing you know, I mean, um, I'm never going to be able to get these pits out unless I remove a whole bunch of um, steel. I'm not crazy about that. Um, so I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, and, you know, later on down the line, if I, if I decide I want to waste about eight hours and just try to sand this stuff with wet dry, I, I can. Um, but so I think at this point, I'm just going to end up putting this guy together. So anyway, the way that you go about making sure that this this uh, things on here is you don't pound it from up here you have you pound it from the base here okay let physics do the job for you see let physics do the job for you let's get it in there a little bit more Not too shabby. Let's go up a little bit higher. That sounds pretty solid. So we got a chisel here. I want to kind of open this up a little bit before I can try to wedge that, put that wedge in. All right, so we know that that is open. in about as good as it's going to get so at this point I'm going to cut this this portion off right here so I took this to the uh, bandsaw and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, belt grinder uh, the belt sander to this flush it up and then uh, give it a test run this actually came from the yard right here um, where the axe uh, head came from. I got a tree above me, so I'm not going to be able to swing too hard. But this works. Especially considering this is rotten. Let's test it on a good piece of wood. Four by four, Doug fur.
works. And all I need now is a nice pumpkin to stick this in. Well, anyway, guys, there it is in all its glory. Um, I think when I have a little bit more time and some patience, I'll come in here with some uh, fine grit sandpaper and wet sand it and do some buffing again. Right now, at this point, um, I just don't see the need. Now with all those pits that I'm never going to get out, you know. But I've got a functioning axe now, and uh, I know it's antiqued. And in fact, I'm pretty sure this was the axe that my great grandfather used to build the house um, in Tucson, Arizona, for my great grandmother and uh, him. So, very cool. Anyway, guys, hopefully you like that. Thanks for watching, and until next time, talk to you later.